Hello. So I uh, have this uh, shirt, which I found uh, <clears throat> thought to be d appropriate uh, for this series of videos. Um, which, uh, you know, we're continuing with the Friday the 13th movies. And uh, now we're at number four. Uh, part four is the final chapter. However, of course, there's like uh, eight more movies after this, so yeah. This isn't really the final chapter, but uh, for the time that was believed, everybody who worked on this movie, the directors, writers, everybody, really believed this was the last movie of the franchise. Paramount seemed to not be too happy, even though it made these films made a lot of money. I guess the thought was, you know, we've made Academy Award winning movies, movies that have won Best Picture, like Godfather 1 and 2, and Ordinary People. We don't need to be associated with this franchise. Um, and of course, critics always uh, criticize these movies uh, constantly. Roger Ebert, in uh, his review of this film, he called it, uh, he said, Friday the 13th, the final chapter is an immoral, reprehensible piece of trash. That's really how he began his review. Uh, he really didn't like this movie. He didn't really like any of the movies. And with each installment, he just seems to have gotten more and more fed up with this franchise like it's just the same thing over and over all these kids go around this like this lake and around there and get killed they always get killed it's always the same thing they try to have like oh they want to just have fun like a fun weekend or whatever and then get killed which is definitely the seems to be the case in this movie a uh, group of friends uh, head to a house that's uh, uh, near like the, some of the, I guess, the protagonists of this film. Their house, uh, like for a week in the woods, and uh, yeah, the protagonists of this film is like Trish and Tommy Jarvis. Tommy will be very important in the next two entries. This essentially begins the Tommy Jarvis trilogy in a way, um, while also concluding the initial Jason Voorhees as the killer trilogy. And I'll get into the next video as to why that is because of the fifth film, but I'm here to talk about number four. And... I don't know, there's a lot I want to say about number four, and yet at the same time, I know I probably can't say everything, maybe shouldn't, because this video would then go on for too long, because this is my favorite movie of this series. I really love part four. The way everything comes together, the way it all ends, it does seem like this would be like the very last movie of the franchise. Though, of course, uh, at the very end, there is something that hints that there could be more to come, which uh, kind of negates the fact the movie is called The Final Chapter. Um, now, if it was called Part 4 and another subtitle, which possibly could indicate the end of Jason, but you know, not necessarily the end of this franchise, then that might have been one thing, but yeah, they called this film the final chapter, and the movie begins uh, with a sort of a recap of the first three movies, which, you know, done because, you know, this is the last movie, might as well do that to sort of help give it a roundup before... Uh, Sort of like a good summary before everything comes to an end. And uh, 
begins with the end of part three, where that left off at night with Jason uh, in the barn, and he's then taken to the hospital, and uh, a doctor and a nurse are, you know, sort of fooling around, uh, almost begin to, but Jason's there, and, you know, the, the, the doctor, he's basically like a perv, and, uh, uh, trying to, you know, basically have some fun, uh, in the cold room while watching TV with this nurse, all while Jason's dead body, or supposed dead body, is there. As they're kissing and beginning to potentially go further, Jason's hand falls and uh, touches the woman, and she screams. And then, well, that's just is a mood killer. So, uh, but apparently he he's just a bit upset about this. Like he can't understand why wouldn't you want to continue, but. Anyway, she doesn't have, think this is as fun as he does, so she leaves. And, uh, he puts Jason into, like, the, to a freezer, but the door it doesn't close all the way. And, you know, he comes, he regains consciousness, and then kills him by cutting his throat with a saw, and then twisting his head backwards, which is actually uh, pretty cool. In interesting kill. And then later we see uh, the nurse's death and she gets just stabbed. Um, and uh, as the and the movie keeps going and we see a group of uh, teens in a car heading, as I mentioned before, to a house next to the Jarvises. And amongst these is uh, Ted and uh, Jimmy, or Jimbo, Jimbo is played by Crispin Glover uh, before Back to the Future. So this was his big movie of the time, really, before, for a full year until Back to the Future came out. Uh, sort of like how Kevin Bacon became really well-known with Footloose, which also came out the same year as this film, 1984. This movie also has another, later on, uh, big name, uh, Corey Feldman, uh, who plays Tommy Jarvis. Um, this film came out uh, before Gremlins, and of course a year before The Goonies. Uh, so this movie has a, a couple of future big names, now, at the time of the release, they were just sort of like, you know, actors in this movie. Um, and Corey Feldman, in one of the documentaries, actually said, like, you know, when he heard being offered to audition for this film, he's like, oh, yeah, I love Halloween. Oh, wait, what? Friday the 13th? Oh, yeah, I like that franchise. Apparently, uh, he was more into Halloween, but, you know. Obviously, he didn't mind not being in a Halloween film because he got to be uh, one of the prominent characters. And um, um, we also see before they, they uh, the guys, uh, as far as all those teens get to the house, they stop by a roadside uh, grave, which was... Uh, is Pamela Voorhees' grave. And, uh, it's the first time Mrs. Voorhees actually has a first name, so you know, that's pretty cool. This movie uh, gave her her name, though it says 1979, despite the first film, from all intents and purposes, seems to take place in 1980. Like, that was the whole point of uh, the first movie, which was present day, supposed to take place in 1980, but I guess they thought 
with part two taking place five years later, it should be well, 1984. Uh, and so that means this film takes place in 1984 since it takes place days after parts three and two. So, you no know, continuity wise, it con it's consistent in that taking place days later. Though that does make the name of the film not as, not as relevant. But with the flashbacks and everything, I guess you could say, well, it does take place in part on Friday the 13th with those flashbacks, which uh, fairly true, but yeah. The, uh, but as the film goes on, uh, you know, Jason kills more people, kills a hitchhiker who they decide not to, the, uh, the teens decide not to pick up because they don't have any more room. Uh, and, uh, we see, uh, Some interesting kills in this film. Um, Crispin Glover got a very unique death, um, but also uh, is a girl who goes out uh, swimming, uh, and, and there's a, got an inflatable raft out in the lake, and then she is killed, subsequently killed. As you're there, though the the though the uh, boat uh, surprisingly does not you know uh, deflate. Interestingly enough, and it doesn't look like the machete is that she's killed with is still in there. So in her, uh, so that makes it quite interesting for sure. But you know it does uh, help pay off with when her boyfriend goes to find her and then. He sees what's happened, and then he gets stabbed in the uh, uh, groin area, and it's not very uh, not very pretty to watch. And it's like he like feel it, and it's not like oh. Uh, one thing I, about this film that I really love is the characters and how they're very seem very real. You know, Jimbo is a very self-conscious kind of character. Like, he's... A big running gag is... Like, he's not able to please women. And it's kind of a... He's sort of down on himself because of that. And he, like, wants to... He's like... He says, oh, I'm horny. And, uh... It's... It, it's... And then later, he actually to have sex, and part of the reason he dies, um, granted he probably would have died anyway, just because he was there, but, you know, even if he wasn't, the fact that, you know, if he was somewhere else and had sex, he likely would have been, uh, killed uh, along the way of Jason's, uh, 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 trek towards that area, and, um, one, one character uh, does relate to part two, uh, Rob, who's uh, Sandra's brother. Looks like he's been hunting Jason for years with how he's packed. He's got like a rifle and a huge backpack and a map and everything. It's like, what? Clearly he got the new he and his family got the news and he just went into action <laughs> hunting this guy. And, uh... But yeah, he's out off for revenge, trying to hunt and kill uh, Jason for killing his sister, um, and she was the one in part two with the iconic death uh, with the spear. Um, so, uh, so that that helps uh, bring uh, this franchise a bit even more in. With continuity, and um, you know, uh, one death uh, that I found really, 
I found really interesting was uh, Death in the Shower. Uh, dude thinks his girlfriend came back, and then, no, it's Jason. He, smat, he breaks through the shower glass, and then he just crushes his head against the wall, and you see his eyeball go, kind of pop out a little bit, and then and his girlfriend comes back later, and then she uh, sees he's dead, and then she's trying to run and get out, and then she gets killed. Um, there's also twins in this film, um, and of course they get dispatched. Um, one of the twins uh, uh, is has sex with Crispin Glover, so. Uh, that twin is the last of those two to die. The first one is gonna leave because, you know, she didn't get to be with any guy at that uh, little, little party that they were having at that house. So, uh, there's that. And then the other one gets thrown out from the window. That's just interesting. And I remember watching some... Uh, someone talk about that and like you know would, would she really die because she got she lands on the car real hard and then you know but it was like didn't look like it would have been enough to actually kill her but clearly it did and uh, uh, as the movie goes on you know you see Trish and Tommy and Rob all trying to figure out what's all going on, and uh, also Ted gets uh, stabbed in the back of the head with a knife, and also the actor was actually high on weed, because uh, he thought, uh, I'll do some method acting, but apparently he was just really paranoid, and that was a terrible mistake. They're watching some stag movies that they found, and thought that was just a fun time, and that's something I really like, is how like the atmosphere is uh, very fairly relaxed and uh, in terms of uh, all the kids makes them more relatable just trying to have a fun time good weekend and uh, basically or week that they're there and uh, the dialogue is pretty good too um, the acting is uh, even better uh, Ted White does a great job as Jason in this film, uh, though Jason now has black fingernails for some reason, but that's fine. Uh, Tom Suvini returns. Um, of course, he did the makeup and effects on the first film. He came back because, you know, gets to kill Jason off. He's like, I got to help create Jason, and now I get to kill him off. So, of course, there will be more movies after this, but... At the time, again, the way everything was pitched to everybody associated with this film, this is the last movie, so try to put all uh, all the best into it. And uh, I think with that in mind, I think that's why the film is as good as it is. The characters are really well-rounded, likable. You know, there's not really that one character you hate and hope to see die and... When they die, you hope they get a very graphic death, though, of course, with these movies. Whatever death they, it was that was created on the set, uh, that was also combined with what was created in the script and to help give you an image, would obviously be cut to some capacity because of the MPAA uh, going after these movies. Um, Though one entry later on really got it the worst, unfortunately, but we'll get to that when we arrive there. But the uh, the 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 Crispin Glover death, you know, he's looking for a corkscrew because you know just had sex with the twin and he was happy and you know wanted to have wine and he's. Looking for a corkscrew. He's asking where the corkscrew is, and then Jason slams the corkscrew down on his hand, ending it to the counter, and then he hits him in the head with a meat cleaver and kills him. And 
That's a very unfortunate way for McFly to meet his end, but, you know, he had sex, and it was about to attempt to consume alcohol. So all those things together just uh, resulted in his uh, demise. Um, yeah, this, uh, this is a, this is a very fascinating, uh, film, you know, you, you feel for these characters in that, you know, again, they're not, none of them are horrible or anything. They basically just want to have a fun time, all the while there's a killer on the loose. Um, and, uh, Trish, you know, they, they left, like, a Tommy home alone. He's like 11, 12 years old. Which, you know, with some stuff going on and Rob trying to, you know, go around hunting Jason and everything. And at one point he comes across his uh, little tent when he was out and about looking around and apparently he didn't bring his gun because he then breaks his gun and wrinkled his maps. Which was just plain rude, you know. Not only did you break his rifle, but then, you know, Jason just was, said he wanted to just, had enough of this guy looking at his map. Like, no. Don't know what your point of view have in all this, but no. Uh, someone referred to, like how Jason, he's kind of a jerk in this movie for just stuff like that. Um. But I, th I thought uh, like, that's kind of interesting and a bit amusing that that's the only thing Jason did. Uh, he didn't wait there for the person to come back and then kill them. No, he just broke his gun and then just wrinkled his map a bit. And I guess he had more important things to do, like killing people. Not only he was there, it was just cause an, an annoyance to when that person comes back. And then, you know, I guess that'll teach them for being there. Um, and so as they, uh, return back to the house, um, also Mrs. Jarvis, their mom, is there, and you also get to hear how, like, the parents of, uh, yeah, obviously they're not together anymore, Mr. and Mrs. Jarvis split up and, like, uh, you know, maybe, like, they should visit their dad someday, and, like, you know, that'd be good to, like, you know, like, talk to him and all that. Uh, and, uh, Tommy also likes to make little, like, uh, masks and things, like, sort of like a little Tom Savini of sorts, and uh, creating little cool gadgets and creature masks, something like Oh, you know, like, what kind of like what Tom Savini would do. And, uh, they thought he was a really cool, unique kid. Um, like to kind of create stuff. And part of that is what they thought for an ending to kill Jason, but that didn't come to pass. Um, obviously. Um, later on, Rob, unfortunately, gets killed. As they're looking in the basement, trying to find Jason after all this time. They also bring their dog. Uh, Trish brings their dog, uh, Gordon. But then he jumps out the window, because he's like, eh, enough of this. And they probably found some dead bodies, and he's like, yeah, I don't like how how this is going, so I'm just going to get out of here. And, and you know, Gordon's pretty smart. You know, he, he, he sensed danger, he got out. Which is probably something that Rob and Trish should have done uh, before. And, uh, fortunately, going upstairs from the basement, but then uh, Jason's down there and he's trying to kill or get them. And then he goes down and try to find them. And then Jason comes and uh, kills him with, like, with a little garden tool. Uh, forget the name, but it has like little three little sharp ends, like, for, like, helping, like, dig for, like, like a little, when you're gardening, 
got one of those little tools. And you hear him, he's saying he's killing me. And uh, she goes to try to see him, but, well, you know, that doesn't really work out. And she eventually just runs and tries to get out of there. And uh, and Tommy was there alone, and he's. She goes back, and uh, Trish goes back and tries to nail up the door, and uh, so that uh, Jason can't get in. And uh, as they're looking around, seeing where he is, uh, Jason throws Rob's body, and he uh, crashes through, and he has like a, a thing in his head, like he's been stabbed in the head after all that, which is quite something you know that's a very uh, graphic <laughs> way to end for uh, Rob and also since you don't really see that part of it how he's been you hear him get stabbed and everything but I guess he's just been stabbed at some point in the head something which you know is very um, very on a very unfortunate uh, way for Rob to end but that happened, unfortunately uh, for him, and also for their parents. They now have to bury two children, uh, which even one of the people who I heard talk about this movie, like, oh, that's kind of really sucks. Now the parents have two deceased children. You know, if they don't have any more children, well, that's it. Their, uh, <clears throat> you know, their, their their offspring is no more, and instead of, I guess, letting authorities or whoever, you know, take care of Jason or who was responsible, this guy who wants to go off on his own and do his own thing. And, uh, uh once Rob's been thrown through the window, uh, you know, obviously both of them are freaked out and Tommy backs up towards the window and then Jason comes and grabs a hold of Corey Feldman, and Corey Feldman was generally scared because he didn't expect that, like, he was supposed to, yeah, that was always supposed to happen, but I guess, like, on account of however when that was supposed to actually go and Ted White was gonna crash through, they kind of waited a little bit, so then, because they waited a bit longer than what was supposed to uh, be anticipated for him to be ready, Ted White decided to then finally grab a hold of him, and then he was beaten and stabbed in the side of the neck with the claw hammer and lets him go. And uh, it's quite interesting because then it's like, you know, his face is very genuine at that point. Um, so Jason then breaks through the door and chases them upstairs into Tommy's room and uh, they barricade themselves in there but he's breaking through through the door and then eventually uh, they take up like a computer Trish and then smashes it on Jason's head and he falls backwards and then Trish gets an idea to try and lure him away and try to get him away from the house and then Tommy will go and you know he'll run away and try to get help uh, of course you know as this, she goes to walk uh, past him, he gets up and then he looks back at Tommy when he says her name and then he goes after Trish. They go back to uh, uh, the other house, which now there's <laughs> the bodies have now been sort of like rearranged and it's uh, quite creepy and She's being chased throughout the place, and uh, or maybe that was actually a bit before. Might be going backwards, but anyway, there you know, Crispin Glover, for instance, at one point his he's been like his hands have been impaled into the wood and everything of the house of an exit, and he's just sort of like like there. That's just quite disturbing. And then when Jason goes to remove him, see where his hands are um, 
stuck there and then go that's just like just like oh you know that effect is very very every time I watch my like, that's actually very effective and very creepy to just see happen it's like oh just just no um, but anyway they go back to the Jarvis residence um, and also mrs. Jarvis has been killed at some point uh, if you hadn't got that already uh, obviously but anyway uh, yeah it's uh, Tommy has been reading articles and news clippings that Rob had about Jason and then he gets an idea, he shaves his head to look like Jason when he was a kid, and uh, Trish uh, hits Jason in the hand with the machete, and then he looks at it, it's like all very bloody now, and just gross, and uh, she smacks uh, the hockey mask off, and we get to see what he looks like in this movie, and it's Bit more like more grotesque than before, and he's gonna go and trying to stab her. And then here comes, uh, you know, Tommy. No, oh, actually, she he, he comes down first and distracts her, and then when then she uh, hits the hockey mask off, and we see what he looks like. And it's when he goes to grabbing at her, and she had dropped the machete. Tommy comes and gets it up, and then she slams it. Jason's the side of his head, and it falls down. Then you see it slide down the machete, and it's like, oh, it's just a really cool and effect to see that happen. As I could, that had to hurt real bad. It's like, well, Jason's dead. They decided that was a better way to kill Jason off than what Tom Savini's mother's thought of putting a microwave on. Tommy's head, or that Tommy had that could go up to like very far, like 11 or 12 or whatever and crank it up and put it on his head and then have his head explode. That was one way they thought of killing Jason, but they thought, no, oh, that's just, like, I guess, too much. And, uh, and, like, the writer of the film thought, said when they found out what, how they were going to kill Jason off, he knew they were going to make room for a sequel with a machete in the head and slang down slowly. And then his hands still twitching when Trish and uh, Tommy are hugging because you know, they're all right, they're fine. And then Tommy just loses it. He gets the machete again and just starts wailing and hacking uh, Jason's body and uh, screaming, die. <laughs> and then we wake, uh, then we see uh, Trish in the hospital, and then uh, 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 Tommy is brought to her to see, uh, and they hug, and Tommy looks into the camera to sort of, the implication is like, uh, they're going to continue on with this, it's like, you know, it's like the germ of Jason has now contaminated Tommy, and there's a new movie, he could be the killer. And, well, that's how Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter, ended. And it definitely was not the final chapter, but I think it uh, would have been a good way to end the series if they actually decided to permanently stop after 4. Because then the implication could be if there was no more sequels, that maybe Tommy did go off and kill more people. Maybe he didn't. Uh, of course, we get to see what happens to him in the next two movies, so, you know, there's no real mystery there. I know I, it was a bit different this time, instead of just seeing my experience, or whatever, kind of went beat by beat of what happened, and I was just trying to show my, uh, just show why I love this movie and talk about it and why it's my favorite entry, like all the things I've talked about, and even some other stuff I didn't talk about. That's all why I really love this movie. Like, what happens in this film, it's just so, just fantastic in my opinion. It's one of my favorite horror films, honestly. 
It's actually, I think, I believe like I ranked it as my third favorite horror film. Um, only beaten out by The Silence of the Lambs and Jaws. Like, that's how, that's how much I love this film. Uh, in terms of horror movies, it's in my, like, my top three, top five. It's just there, top ten for sure for me. Um, none of the other Friday the 13th films, uh, Recall, I've created a list before. I don't believe any of the others have uh, up in the top uh, 10 or even 20. So I really love this film. Uh, to me, it's just that good. It's excellent. If you haven't seen it, obviously, you know, spoilers. <laughs> but, you know, I kind of thought, you know, as I'm talking on all these as fairly in-depth as possible, that's going to happen. Um, and I think Ted White actually uh, is my favorite Jason. I know Kane Hodder, who came later, kind of made the character his own. Um, played the character more than anyone else. You know, he does a great job, but I just love the, how Ted White plays him. It's like he honors the previous Jasons that came before him and added his own thing to it, and I really like that. I like how this, the, he, how he continued on creating a, his own distinct Jason. And uh, that's something that others have done later on, and uh, some sort of just are able to be just as good, if not possibly in some eyes, better. Like people think Kane Hodder is better. It's, uh, some think C.J. Graham is the best in Part 6. Some think uh, Richard Broker in Part 3 is the best, Steve Dash 2. Um, I think Ted White is the best. Um, this is a, also a fan favorite uh, within the franchise. People really love this movie. Um, it's often ranked very highly. You know, uh, sometimes it's ranked number one, sometimes two or three, but uh, usually it's very high up there, at least somewhere in the top three uh, for the most part. Um, and I believe it deserves it. I believe it's one, of the, it's one of the best entries of the franchise. Characters are great. The story is excellent. Uh, it's able to be seen as closing out Jason Voorhees' story in this franchise as the killer. And I think it could have been the end, but this movie made money, and so that means a sequel has to happen, despite the title saying the final chapter. But that doesn't matter when, you know, a movie makes money. Um, here is the alternate uh, cover other poster. Three times before you have felt the terror, known the madness, lived the horror, but this is the one you've been screaming for. And there's another, there's another poster that says, uh, April, Friday, April 13th, or, yeah, Friday, April 13th is Jason's unlucky day. That was another, like, tagline they had. And, uh, yeah. And here's one of the masks that Corey Feldman's character of Tommy Jarvis, uh, created. And here's that, uh, scene I mentioned with, uh, him getting attacked by Jason, uh, through the window. And Trish is trying to help him. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a great film, uh. I love the special features on this uh, Blu-ray, um, which is pretty much the same as the other uh, Blu-ray and also the DVD release. So you get everything, obviously, from the previous releases in this. So uh, yeah, it's just it's it's a great uh, addition uh, to the film or to this. Uh, franchise, uh, if you, or edition of this set, of this film, of this set, um, 
So yeah, going on 40 minutes now, but yeah, I I could keep going, but I really love this film. This is an excellent movie. It's incredible. Um, if you've seen it, uh, what do you think? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's one of the best of the franchise? Do you think it's the best? Do you think the film or the franchise should have ended here, or are you happy with how it went on? Let me know uh, if you want. Um, yeah. Anyway, I uh, hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week, and I'll see you all next time.